Thank you, folks. Um, thank you very much for all of you to be here today. There's a lot more people on the outside, so we had to break this session into two. We do twice a session. So I don't know, uh, Chris, is there any kind of maintenance you need to let people know that they wake in the room and we come back with another time? Where you... So when this finishes, like, I suggest everybody leaves to okay. the next batch. To, to the next batch. Yeah, so you got it. So when you finish, you, you go. Out of here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Right, so thank you very much. I will do a quick round of introduction so you know who we are. I am Enrico Le Fears. I am one of the members of the Spectrum Next team. And you probably know me for helping organize the whole thing happen. Next to me. Yeah, I'm Mike Padwalader. I work alongside Enrique. Um, some say project manager type. I try to motivate the team to set objectives. I work with um, manufacturers, third parties to get things done. I work with our industrial designer, Phil. Um, and yeah, and I guess that's uh, brings you. That brings me. Is that working? It is, yeah. I'm, I'm Phil, Phil Candy. Uh, I'm an industrial designer based in Cambridge. And uh, I helped design the Specnex with my late colleague, Rick Dickinson who is one of the original Sinclair designers. Many of the products that you love were designed by Rick. So, um, yeah, manufacturing. Um, hi, I'm Mike Daly. I do lots of tools and demos for the next. I've got C-Spec, uh, what you'll probably know about. Um, I'll just help out on the team whenever I need them. <coughs> it's my turn. I was just gonna say, can you all hear, by the way, at the back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bit, a bit louder, yeah? Yeah, okay. I don't need a microphone. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> Who said that? It says Grand Slayer Veer is here. Uh, I'm Phoebus Dokus. Um, I wrote the manual. And I'm design games so with my partner, Lyndon, over there. And. Um, Help a little bit uh, with the production whenever I'm needed, and trying to bring the best machine we can to you. That's it. Here's Mr. Butler. I'm a thorn in everybody's side. Um, <laughs> Simon Butler. Um, a legend. No, veteran. <laughs> Pixel Pusher are on several titles for the next, and um, yeah, I'd like to think that I keep certain people on their toes and um, I'm very honoured to be part of this project. There are a lot of people out there that are infinitely more qualified than me but I'm thrilled to be part of the next team. And I'm Tim Gilbert, which you probably, if you've done anything with the, the next, you might see my name strewn around a few uh, drivers, the mouse driver, uh, tied with the help of lots of people and building on some uh, uh, projects have been elsewhere, plus I do a lot of the uh, electronics validation, so when the, the final uh, uh, board arrives, if it doesn't work, it's nothing to do with me. Um, <laughs> if it works really well, uh, you know, I, I have a little part in making that happen, and the fact it loads tapes really well was a heck of a lot of work. Plus it cost me an interface one to get the interface one working, because I dropped a wire in the wrong place, even though I'm a reasonably skilled electronics engineer. I uh, I do make mistakes as well, so uh, we're all we're all open to things. So we all contribute. I think is uh, the chance. Plus, uh, average just great fun playing with the thing. Uh, before we got started, I just wanted to ask who here is a Kickstarter one backer, or who was a Kickstarter one backer, and how many do we have for Kickstarter two, <laughs> <laughs> and how many back both? <laughs> okay, that's less than I thought. Okay. Yeah, so. What's the next one? Uh, <laughs> What's that side? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true, actually. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, we'll get a second view afterwards. <laughs> so, Enrique, what, what do you want to say? I have an say, end goal. Where do I like? <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's I'm excited. Perfectly valid, perfectly valid end goal, yeah. I, 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 don't, I think one, one of the things people ask is when it's shipping, right? So, we're happy to say that both ships are past the Suez Canal. So, they, they should be hitting Liverpool and Rotterdam pretty soon. So, that, that's out of the way. Uh, so, it's know. already shipping? No, no, no. It's yes, it's in a ship. ship. Yes. Yeah. So it's in a ship. So technically, it's shipping. Yes, yeah. technically, it's shipping. Uh, as shipping as it can get. There's a ship to be reshipped. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> to pay the taxes. Sorry, Ali. Give me Greece ish. Oh, Greece. Okay. Here, yeah. Athens. Um, there you go. Yes, they have been uh, reloaded. Yes. I don't know where the other ones are. Well, it's but, the uh, ones that were. The other ones are uh, out of Sicily. They're close to Gibraltar. So out of Sicily, close to Gibraltar, so it's very soon. Do you want to give the names of the ships? No. <laughs> no. Please! Oh, please! They're going to jinx them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We tried really hard to bring yeah. it yeah. 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 to the high Oh. I'll just say it. One, sure one, person has, money. Sorry, one person has correctly guessed the name of the ship yes. on the Facebook group. The European yeah. ship, maybe, maybe the UK ship. No, 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 no. I wasn't going to be specific, so that it was more ambiguous. No, 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 no. So you're spoiling it now. <laughs> uh, I guess one of the things people really like to hear is uh, uh, war stories, horror stories. How, how was the, the hardest thing we had to do? So why don't we start by that, right? So I, I think a fuel is a good one. To start with this, uh, we can talk about all the pains to get that case to be. <laughs> and when we thought it was all good, we had to do it all over again from yeah. scratch. I'd say uh, you're okay to slag off our previous manufacturer, but, yeah, the, but the current one probably not too much. No. <laughs> uh, yeah. It, it doesn't sound, when you speak it into this, I think it doesn't have, sound I think like you have to speak quite loudly into it. You yeah. to. No, 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 you have to. There. There. So can, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. So yeah, problems. Everyone wants to hear about problems. I'm sure, I, I thought everyone was painfully aware of problems. I, I feel like I, <laughs> I almost owe people an apology for taking so long. But um, yeah, at the end of the day, uh, manufacturing is a team effort, and uh, while. Rick and myself were very experienced. We know hopefully what we're doing with mouldings and different processes, have a feel for materials. We do our best and then we'll approach a manufacturer and we'll go through a process called uh, DFM, Design for Manufacture, and then they will assess what we have. We'll have concessions and we change bits here and there, walls, move, thicknesses, stuff like that, and they'll decide on gate positions and stuff like that. And um, effectively, it, it, it is a team effort. And yeah, with, with the first manufacturer, well, the first manufacturer pulled out, actually. So we had a UK manufacturer. We went through DFM with them. They looked good. And then right at the last second, they pulled out. So we were scrambling around looking for somebody to replace them. and. <coughs> Well, I'm not going to mention company names, but they, they were they were in China. They were a Texas-based company. They had an output, a factory in China. And because we were in a rush, we had to drop the normal design protocol, which is to do DFM with that outfit, because surprise, this may surprise some people, but uh, you would expect once you've designed the parts, or the, 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 you've got all the draft angles and wall sections and all that kind of stuff on there, that most moulders would do the same job, but they don't. They, there's variation. So anyway, we, we didn't have time to go through solid, thorough DFM, mould flow analysis, warp flow analysis, all that good stuff. We just had to run with it because we were short on time, as you guys all know. And it was a struggle. We, we, the parts came in, the first samples looked reasonably good, uh, but then it was difficult to get useful improvements. The main, the main problem, I think, was um, warped cases. Is that right with the first one? Yeah. Uh, you, you have to forgive me. I, I put a lot of products into production, but I remember this one. 
Yeah, this one was this one was trouble. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, we, we that that Kickstarter took a long time to get through, but we, we got it to a stage where we we were comfortable, we were happy enough. But it, it's a compromise. At the end of the day, I would have I would have continued probably to try and get better. <laughs> to this day, yeah. <laughs> well, probably not. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm aware that people are waiting. They paid their money. They want it. They want product, and they want good product. So is that is that balancing act of when do you pull the trigger? When do you go right? That's that's the one. That's good enough. It's a compromise thing. Um, so we we got that, and we were pretty happy with that one, I think. And then, well, well the reviews were good anyway. People people seem to like it. Has some nice qualities to it, nice mouldings, um, good structural integrity, the keys feel good. For most people, I think that's a pretty decent product. And then we thought the second Kickstarter would be just be a matter, now we've gone through all this trouble and pain, just phone them up and we'll have a few more of those, please. And then we got the um, the bad news, well, I didn't know Enrique did. Uh, I get all the bad news. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how he's looking so young. Every time I see him, he just looks younger. Right. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but yeah, what, what happened with the um, with the second manufacturer? Um, there was a fall, fall the, uh, fallout between uh, the Texas company and the Chinese company. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we we thought we were just going to be ringing them up and saying, "Yeah, let's have a few more." And yeah, we're not sure exactly what happened, but um, the tools weren't up to snuff. Apparently, we couldn't use the tooling. The tooling are the molds. The, it's a quite complex metal into which you squirt molten plastic and get your your plastic parts. So we don't know what they've done, but they the Texan company said that um, they were not in good condition. Um, he may have fallen out with that molder. I wouldn't be surprised. He was a difficult character to say the least. He was very very obstructive. Um, I had to drag that product through to get it into production. It is just asking questions, and the answers came back, no. And have you got any solutions? No. Nope. It, it was constantly like that. It was just really awful. So I was pretty glad to get shot of that outfit. And then we, um, the first company, they said, right, OK, we'll retool it free of charge. But Enrique and the team uh, discovered a new um, outfit, new company, also in China, and they could tool it up and get us our first production run for the same price as the other guys. So we thought, well, okay, we've got to retool it. Do we want to go through the same aggro again, or should we go with this other company that seemed to have a good track record? They had, we'd seen the products they could do. Let's go with them. So that's what we did. We got the first samples through, looked very encouraging. Most of the problems that the first uh, molder um, came across um, had gone. And we, we thought, well, OK, we, it's almost all systems go. There were just a few tweaks. But oddly, there were, there were different problems with this. I just, yeah, it's, it's, I just, it's weird. Same, same form, same injection positions, same molding parameters you would think roughly so why are we having problems i don't know but uh, yeah it, it, they were they were significant enough i'm sure a lot of people would go well, you know just just press the button that'll, that'll do it won't it won't do i can assure you you would you would not be happy if you saw them you wouldn't be happy i'm not just being pedantic and going well this is some perfectionist bloke uh -huh. no this these were probably not good they were good, but not good enough. Not for this sort of product. If we were doing banana crates, yeah, fine. <laughs> but we're not. We're doing some high-end bit of um, kit um, with legacy. And uh, you're probably aware that uh, I'm not going to drop the ball on my mate's product. This is his product. He's, the range of Sinclair products mean a lot uh, to you guys, to Rick, to me. Uh, not that I do that with any <laughs> any product I design, in all honesty, but um, no, certainly not. Um, so yeah, it's it's taken longer than anyone wished, but um, yeah, it's um, yeah we know all about trouble in manufacturing. So anybody that thinks you just press buttons, design it, ship it off to somebody, get a good product back, you're in a dream world. You've never put anything into production before, or you've been very lucky. 
So yeah, it's a bit of a struggle manufacturing. Rick used to say it a lot. He said he never understood why people wanted to go into manufacturing. It's just a headache. But um, yeah, the results can be good. So you know, once you're there, we can now put our feet up and we're planning on just sort of buying a resort, are we? Is that what we're doing? <laughs> and then we're going to get a and each and a big yacht. No, it's a house in Barry Island. It's a house in Barry Island, mate. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <coughs> uh, yeah, so that was our that was our sort of troubled um, <coughs> route to getting into production, but I think we're we're largely happy with it. Yeah. We'll see we'll see what are in the boxes when we with this uh, with this <laughs> next consignment. But, uh, yeah, I'm sure I'll talk again. But uh, yeah. well, thank you. That's it. Thank you, Phil. Yeah, and then. Uh, oh. yeah. And uh, of course, you all know the stories that we had a lot of trouble having to redo the whole board as well because the, the original chips we used are no longer available and so on. So each one of these are, are a horror story, but because the team is here together with this, it's very easy to go over these things because we support each other, right? So we cry a bit on each other's shoulders and we go forward. Um, but it was a very different cry from, ah, we've done it once, we just press a button, we do it twice, right? <coughs> Kickstarter 2, hey, it's going to take six months, then two years of pandemic, another year of retooling everything, and it's gonna, it was fun. So here we are. <laughs> but, uh, but on the other end of the spectrum, because of all of this, uh, it enabled us to create a lot of new things for it, software specifically, right? That we have been doing a lot of work. I, the Flash, I don't know where it is hiding here, uh, is, is now about to finish uh, the new version of Head Over Heels with the help of Simon, uh, Tim, and, 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 and his, his, his friends have been able to put together a lot more uh, um, support for the next. Uh, the Phoebus, Lyndon, and the others have been working on Target Renegade, Way of the Exploding Fist, Bogey, uh, Zantrax. Zantrax. So all these games are coming along and it will be there around the same time that the next starter ship. So that's the silver lining, right? And we have people like Mike creating amazing demos on it and pushing the envelope with things like Lemmings running on it and Wolfenstein running on it and of course the C-Spec emulator that enables everyone else to work and make with it. So yeah, even with the delay, that, that created opportunities for us, right? And, uh, I don't know if you want to talk about the experience of no. putting games together on, on the manual. <laughs> How many iterations of the manual? Uh, <laughs> Has it got an index? Yes. <laughs> yes, it has. You saw it, didn't you? Not yet. It was. <laughs> it was a different set of uh, challenges for me uh, specifically because. Uh, apart from the 27 times I had to rewrite the manual the previous time around, this time we had the Chinese bring on our backs because they were demanding that uh, we have everything ready, what, May originally? And I, I didn't sleep for days on end to do that. I had uh, It was very difficult because when you write a manual for a machine like the next, where the, the software is being developed as you write, like the previous time, I wanted to look forward and be able to cover more things that we're not just there yet when we were writing the manual. So some of it is smoke and mirrors. You have to, <laughs> and you, you, you beg a little bit and you pray a lot that the thing's gonna work exactly the same way you wrote it. Um, so this time around too, uh, version 2.8 and 2.09 of Next the, the Exhaust, it wasn't there yet when I was writing that stuff. So we had a good team behind me uh, trying to edit, but I had a lot of fights with them <laughs> because they couldn't understand the mechanics of this and to, to, to add insult to injury, the Chinese yelling, print the damn thing, print the damn thing, print the damn thing. In the end, they were the ones that delayed us a lot, obviously, but the thing is, um, you have to strike a balance between uh, how accurate information is, and it has to be accurate, uh, how up-to-date information <coughs> is, and it has to be up to date, and how further ahead you can look so it doesn't get outdated the moment it, it, it gets printed. And I think this time too, I mean, I've not done, done the improvements I wanted to because I really wanted to do a lot more. Um, uh, I may not have been able to do that, but uh, I think we're in a good, good position to cover the machine for a couple more years, um, uh, documentation-wise. 
what we're going to have in the future, uh, we're going to have, uh, first of all, the, the um, Kickstarter one guys will not be left alone. We promised with Enrique that we're going to do a little Kickstarter just for the manual so you guys can have the manual as well if you want it, which is going to be colored like this is. Uh, and uh, it's gonna explain things about the newer version of the of the software that runs now, and uh, hopefully, if we manage to do a Kickstarter three, we'll be ready a little bit ahead of time this time for the manual. I mean, I'm talking about myself only. <laughs> um, one of the other things that's as develop as uh, Butler here, Mr. Butler will tell you, is that sometimes you have to work. On machine, on machine um, specs that have not been finalized yet. So you have to design for those without actually seeing the, the damn thing before it's uh, prepared and ready. And uh, it is a challenge every single day and twice on Sunday, usually. Thank God we have Mr. Tim Gilbert here that helps us and even makes, uh, as you haven't probably known, the microdrives work with a simple command on the next, because I had a lot of people complaining about that. And he promised me, he promised me, he's going to make the floppy drives work as well, with a simple command. Ever, everybody heard that? He promised it, today. All right, that's about it for me. <laughs> well, if you want to see how much work it is to get a catalog on a microdrive work under what is basically a plus three system, because that's effectively what next is, because um, you have to go back to being a plus two effectively to do it. There is about um, 16 hours of continuous streaming on my channel to try to write the code. So if I can sit through it and help out, please. Because right? that was hard work getting that working, but it was good fun. And cat yeah. one, and it works. Yeah, and it just sees the contents of your microdrive. And it, it's, it's that ability to use all the existing all right. electronics, which is, you know, that's a big part of that. If you've got anything that it, it still works. You know, it is a true inheritor to the spectrum. It can be any one of them. And your, your interface two, your cartridges will work, your microdrive, your interface one, you can network with it. It can use the existing and it is a true successor. I think it's a tribute is really due to everyone for the effort they put in and the passion to create a machine that looks that good. And it was, well, I just, the amount of time spent listening to loading sounds to make sure the loading was reliable. <laughs> How the heck, well, I mean, literally every one of us, Mike, with his spreadsheet with this one, they've tried this game at this volume level and all the QA work. It is, um, I love listening to the Deluxe Spectrum loading screen, I really do. I think I can pretty well hum several times now. <laughs> you know, I'd actually forgotten about all that. I think I blocked it out because um, I think each <laughs> it's of us. in my brain. <laughs> each, each of us loaded maybe 20, 30 games yeah. um, baselined on, say, a Spectrum 1 to 8 Plus at different volumes trying to work out what was the, the crucial volume or what was the minimum volume for that game to load and recording all that in a spreadsheet and then performing the same exercise on an issue 2B to derive all of the, the optimum loading volumes, basically loading the entire game from beginning to end, recording success or failure at every single volume level, then doing it for the end go, then doing it for the issue 4, every iteration of issue 4 board as we tweak the ear circuit, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Who tape tweaked loading. the ear circuit? What's that? <laughs> my microscope and my, my, and my soldier knife is still burnt at my fingers as well. <laughs> yeah, so, so one, of the, one, of the, one of the main people really um, who makes the next what the next is, is Alan Albright. And um, he took over the core duties maybe in around, was it 2018 uh, or so? Right before the, the release of the... Uh, it was 2019. Yeah. That was it 2019, yeah. right, yeah. He the, 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 the okay. firmware, yeah. yeah. He, he took the next in directions that I don't think anyone really imagined would be possible at the time. But one of the things as well with Alan is he knows his electronics as well. And so every few weeks when we're going through the Kickstarter too. He's coming up with circuit designs and you know if we add this, if we add that, this will improve tape loading. This will improve some really niche scenario for someone, you know, one percent of one percent of users might want to do this. And if we added this or changed this then we could do that. And part of it was really frustrating because 
every single time we thought we'd gotten to the finished prototype and feature complete, Alan would come up with something, and um, I'd say no. It's a good thing he lives and, far away. Yeah, when well, he lives in Canada, yeah, he's with the beavers and the bears. But um, I'd say no, and then I'd listen to him, and he'd explain the rationale. And because he spent the last three or four years effectively bailing us out of, um, well, I can't say the word, but making the next so much more than it was, I just feel a massive sense of debt to him. And so I will fight in his corner. And I know, Enrique, you've been there when one of his requests has come through and the frustration and annoyance and such, but I think we can all agree he was always right. He was always right, yeah. yeah. But the amount of times we have to resubmit the design to the Bureau of Tests for radio frequency and things like that, right? And because the first next was, it is a beautiful machine, but if you put it near a radio or something like that, right? Either the radio will die, the next will die. It's like, it's, I'm exaggerating, but it is not very radio frequency compliant and so on, right? There's a lot of things there. And this time we wanted to make it by the book, super sturdy, no noise anywhere, etc. So every time we introduce a new cir circuit, we have to go back to, to the electronic designs and redo the whole thing. So we ended up doing it seven times. Yeah, and then we have to basically retest every single scenario which is relying on all of the team to come together into the various, it's like the A-team, various levels or areas of discipline. Um, you know, Tim at the end there with his scope and others, you know, running software tests and other, other kinds of tests, testing all of the software uh, that we test on every kind of core update. You know, there's hundreds and hundreds of tests that go on for each revision of board. And every time there's a new one, we have to just start it all over again. We also have compatible machines that are out and we need to we need to take care of those as well because yeah. uh we encourage this is an open machine from the get-go it was a really open machine so people even even if we can make an x there are other people that can pick up and make a design so the platform lives on uh the, our software runs everywhere and it has to we have to make sure that for them that they don't have the resources we do that they it will run on them as well so if you have an end goal, for example, and many of you people do, the software that will run on a, uh, issue four, it will run on the end goal without a problem. And this is very important to us and very important to everyone. And both um, Alan and uh, Tim have worked really, really hard for this to be a reality. So I think we, you and we owe them a massive uh, <laughs> thanks. Trust me, Alan deserves the praise. He's the designer, I just showing the scope that it actually works in reality, which it usually does. Because to give him credit, that first spin of the art, because we, you know, we had to change the FPGA, his first spin of the board worked. Changing From the, the entire FPGA, yeah. yeah. changing yeah. the whole board, the first spin booted and worked. And that's a real achievement. He changed that's everything, the IDE, yeah. the yeah. architecture, everything. Yeah. And he's that's first kind of level, 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 isn't it, really? Yeah. Yeah. Something like that yeah. working first time. And now you've got real timing on HDMI as well. Well, the, the strange thing is, and I, I mentioned this in our, in our last chat last year, I don't think anyone in the team has ever seen a picture of Alan. <laughs> <laughs> no one has ever spoken to him on the phone. No, he's a Yeti. We don't know. <laughs> If he's some, you know, future AI, <laughs> because he, he, he has such a, a breadth of knowledge on things, such a humbleness as well. Um, and I hope one day, you know, we can bring some of these people over. Yeah, I, I never met Gary in real life, and that's something I really wanted to fix. Yeah, Gary's another one who we owe a large debt of gratitude to. Are you talking about BSLO, the uh, next door, or Gary Lancaster next door? Lancaster. Oh. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I never met him, and we, he's a big part of the project, right? He makes the OS and the basics, so everything that runs software-wise, it's, it's him, so a big debt. And speaking of which, one of the people driving the next to his full extent, or uh, pushing the boundaries, of course, Mike, right? And Mike is a legend in the games industry for, for his work in games like Lemmings and so on. So, Mike, what, what do you think of what we have built this time? Is it a... Does it get the mic seal of approval? <laughs> um, <laughs> the, the next is a, a, a 
an awesome machine to play with from a programmer's point of view. There's so many tools and toys in there. Um, I mean, it, it's probably up and beyond what like the SNES and Mega Drive were of its time. Um, it's super powerful and super flexible. So it's always good to tinker with just new ideas and stuff. Um, I have a great fun just playing with loads of ideas and not finishing any of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when are we going to see your first game? Do you reckon? When's that going to Well, that means to me. Well, that means to me. Oh, no. oh, <laughs> I don't know. There's always something new and exciting that's I've got an idea of to, to do something. Um, so it's it's always just like a new thing over the hill. So we'll, we'll see. At some point, I'll finish something. Um, but a lot of the stuff I, I do, I put out as kind of source for people to look at and, and play with themselves as well. So um, hopefully, some of it gets out there. Yeah. Um, I think I think you were a victim of C spec, weren't you? Really, you, you created an emulator, and then all of a sudden, you had a whole community to support. Yeah, there, there was a point it. where I spent a, a, a year or so just doing that, getting all the features in. Because the features came kind of thick and fast. When we first started, the features actually went into C-Spec first, so we could write demos, so they could then be tested on the hardware. So it, it's kind of evolved over the time, and it's just, if I it, it looked at doing an emulator from scratch now, I'd never do it. There's so much in it. It's just a nightmare uh, to actually try and emulate it all and get it running. So actually having it built up over time has, has been a godsend, really. Um, and it's, it's I, I said it from the start, it's my dev kit that you know everybody else can use if they want. It's, it's, it's just a nice little tool to use for, for programmers. So. Uh, in the subject of games, Simon is just about to shape head over heels. You can see by your t-shirt, they're very excited about the prospect of, of that game hitting the I can say it's a probably, uh, without doubt, it's not probably, it's well, the best version of Head Over Heroes there are out there. Thanks, well, thanks so much. I, I don't, still don't know if Flash is even in the room. I will keep on referring to him as if he is this eminence around, but he is here today at least. You're uh, on the ground, you'll find it. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose the key thing as well is what do you go, I mean, what do you want to know? You know? Yeah, We're all exactly. sat here, this is your, your five minutes. To no, yeah, but before, before I open to them, I want to see from Simon one last question. Oh, um, oh, okay. What, what game? game what, what game would you would like to work on next? Um, somebody suggested uh, suggested the other day, having seen um, the first screenshots from Head Over Heels, a young lady said, "Oh, what about Night Law?" And I said, "Well, I a I don't want to open that legal can of worms, and b I don't like the game." <laughs> Um, it's a great game. That's sort of a bit of a misnomer there. I don't like it, but it's a great game. Uh, it's terribly flawed, uh, ridiculous. <laughs> you can be halfway through something and turn into the werewolf or turn back from the werewolf. It was a nice mechanic. It wasn't really valid. I don't. I don't want to work on anything that exists. Um, somebody on this panel suggested one of the Yes on titles. And again, even though I loved them back in the day, I wouldn't want to work on either of them. Um, I'd like to do something for the next that would give the next its own iconic game. I think I have said on my sort of rather salty podcast, the Not Suitable for Children podcast, uh, there's I think at the moment, head over heels, not from anything that I've put into it. This is purely from an aspect of looking at Mike, Wa Mike Flash Ware's coding. I think that head over heels is the killer game for the next at the moment. I'd like to think that maybe someone in this room could write something that will surpass it. I know, yes, Phoebus, almost certainly. Um, <laughs> but I'd like to, I'd like to work on something original. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, Bogey is better. Um, it's faster. But I fall into all these ridiculous tropes, platformers, and metro billions and whatnot. But which isn't a bad thing. Uh, we have some ideas in the can. 
I have to go back and finish off Monkey McGee, which was noted for Kickstarter 1 for the next, uh, as was Quakestar. So I've got two titles to finish, and I'll say it, shall I? Yeah, go on. Yeah, we've got a game called O at the moment. It's just a code name. Um, I'm working with Dave here. And it's a game for Fusion Retro. And it's for the next. And yes, it falls into all the typical Simon Butler um, tropes of platforming, and climbing chains, and jumping over spikes and whatnot. But with the help of this unbelievably talented young man, my few meager ideas have borne exceptional fruit over the last few weeks. And that is something that will be um, physically announced online within the next couple of weeks with um, screenshots and perhaps a playable demo. We wanted to have a playable demo for the show. It didn't happen. We chose not to go for anything substandard. <coughs> so we just stepped back. Um, we've got a really good team. We've got Paul Hesso, who likes to go by the name Noise by Night now for some strange reason, because he belongs to the evil double width pixel world of the brown Commodore machine. Um, and Dave and myself, Chris Wilkins keeps throwing in his really annoying ideas. Can we not have swinging chains and <laughs> spiky bouncing balls and whatnot? Um, so yeah, that is going to come along. I've got, so that is three titles in development. But there will be more. Mike, um, once we finish Head Over Heels, which will be finished before Christmas, Mike took over um, responsibility of the title less than three months ago. Um, after, fuck it. We had three years of absolutely fuck all on this title. <laughs> we had nothing but excuses delivered. And it got to a point where we couldn't take excuses anymore. And Mr. Experience had run out of tales to tell. The game was handed over to Mike Ware, and in three months, he has delivered. I mean, for a start, I don't know whether you know, the demo here today has 120 rooms. What demo game has 120 rooms? You go and play that game, it will blow your socks off. And we're going to use that engine for other isometric titles, original isometric titles, and we are going to deliver to you guys the games you deserve. Thanks, Aaron. I thought we were going to get the PG version of that, Simon. <laughs> Simon. Yeah, that's the PG version. That, that, that comes from, from, from the back of, of, of Mike Flash not liking isometric games mm -hmm. yeah. and refusing to do anything isometric until they started head over here and say, No, I like it. We still have a few more minutes because we started late, so I'd like to open two questions. Um, anything goes. Yeah, me. Yeah, 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 as well. Yeah. So be, be candid and ask us anything. This is the opportunity for us. Uh, to go. So, uh, pass the mic around, right? Uh, start from here. All right, thank you. Uh, uh, Jan here. Um, both have a Kickstarter 1 1. Kickstarter 2 uh, is on its way, I hear, and uh, there's an Engo sitting at home as well. And uh, one thing I realized since I'm also in, in education is that um, the thing that I think most of us have experienced as kids, which is you have a computer, and, you know, especially Spectrum with, you know, the programming instructions right on the keys, keeps screaming at you, start coding. And uh, as we all know, that kind of went away and, and people have become less able to sort of master these machines in front of them, especially with smartphones and stuff. So it looks to me like the next could be a great opportunity to get people into coding with a low threshold, you know, right there at your fingertips, you can start writing programs kind of machine. Are there any initiatives or thoughts in, in that direction that have come your way 
of you know using a machine like that for educational purposes? It certainly happens uh, in households that uh, parents give to their kids and want them to start to type in basic games, etc. Right? And you were right. Starting the machine with no OS uh, uh, loadings, just the bare minimum, straight into basic, and you start programming your own thing, is one of the reasons why it's an educational piece of hardware. The problem is that we are not a company, right? None of us take a salary from this, so we do this because we're passionate about it. For that to happen requires a, a scale that we will have to be a company behind it. We, we can't ship 10,000, we have to ship a million, right? And that becomes uh, a hobby that spiraled into something that will consume our lives. And I don't think any one of us is ready to do that, um, being honest. Um, I have two other jobs <laughs> on top of the next. Um, so it's, it's hard. I would love to see it, but it would have to be through the hands of somebody else. I don't think we are capable of doing a good job in, at that scale. I don't think we are the people to do that. <coughs> The people behind you, I think there's a gentleman there. <coughs> Hi there. Uh, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. I just wanted to ask you uh, about the distro. Um, now there's like the GitHub version and then there's a the current version that you've got on your, your website. Um, uh, the current version that's in existence, is that the version that's going to be shipped with Kickstarter 2? And the reason why I'm asking this now is because I've got a number of things, a number of next projects that I've got in development, um, 1983, for example, and such like. And I just want to make sure that like, um, I can work from a platform that's workable with both. Uh, yeah, Whatever is closer to the one that gets delivered with the next that are on their way now is the one that's on the GitHub. Normally, the definite, the definitive version is the one that we have on the site under latest distro. Uh, but because we had to change the machines, and there is a thing with the cores now and the HDMI, uh, the GitHub supersedes that and it's closer to what you're going to get. So you better work with the GitHub version and not the one that's on um, on the site. It will be updated eventually. There, Probably we need a little bit of feedback from now that we're going to have thousands of machines out there. We're going to get the feedback that's more um, indicative to what minute issues we might have not caught and then uh, come back and issue whatever fix we need to. So until that happens, the, Git, the GitLab is the better one. Okay, just one other point on, this, on the subject. Um, having an auto update feature with perhaps the final version may be quite useful. I've I've experimented with. Uh, we have auto update. Yeah. The, after twenty two ten a, uh, there is a, not a lot of auto update to download automatically. Like there's nobody, no, not everyone has a Wi-Fi connection, so we can't force upon anyone the, an automatic feature because you never know. Sometimes there is a feature that's broken. I can give you, I can force feed you something that will break your game or break your, your software. So there is a way though, through the operating system right now, it is in, in the menus, there is an update and uses a one single file that's basically a zip file that has what the parts that have changed. Mm -hmm. And you just download that, put it on your SD card, then it updates everything. But uh, again, as I said, there's not something that we can actually force feed you. And we shouldn't, and we won't, and we won't actually. There's no point in doing that. It's it's a tinkering machine, and everybody wants to use it in a different manner. We've seen a lot of people programming, um, not just games. It's not just a gaming machine. It's a, uh, a machine to learn. It, uh, first of all, for us, we do uh, we experiment on our, on, on our own for things that are that interest us. Like, for example, you saw uh, outside. Uh, Simon Goodwin was doing stuff uh, with uh, uh, the serial port and uh, LED that actually would end up being a um, Spectrum to QL network. This is not necessarily a gaming feature. It's something, it's a machine that tinkers, you can tinker and you can actually create something. So it's a, it's um, 
It's balance. Our, it's, yeah, it's, it's balance. It's, yeah, and it's, it's art, really. So how can I tell you how to run your art? I can't. So I'm not going to do that. We're going <laughs> to offer a distribution that has features, and you can choose if you're going to use them or not. And that's the answer to that. Okay, thank you for much. Thank you. Uh, there is a couple of chat that's one there and one here. Oh, please, man. Um, I'll project. I've got to ask, Kickstarter 3, at what point do you make that decision? Kickstarter 3, at what point do we make that decision? With the money. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're launching in March. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, I, I, I think I speak in, in the name of everybody here. Um, that um, one, we need a break. When we ship, we need to be able to step back and sleep for a while. Uh, but now it seems that there is a situation where it is a turnkey, right? Because we have uh, localized everything with basically two, two partners. One that manufactures the keyboard and one that manufactures everything else. So it is turnkey, should be repeatable. Right? You said that before. I said exactly the same thing before. So I, the, I, I'm dreading to do it because in the second I announce it, there will be a new pandemic or something. <laughs> <laughs> anyone, anyone here who didn't back either Kickstarter would be interested in a Kickstarter 3? And how many people other than that may be interested in a Kickstarter 3? <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that more to supplement a next you already have so you have a spare? I need Two one spurs. with a clear case. Yeah. Uh, white one. White one. White one. White one. <laughs> you had an opportunity earlier to win that one. Yeah. Is, <laughs> is the winner in here, by the way? No. Yeah. They, if he wasn't, I want to I want to have him. Yeah, because yeah, they run off before they got mugged. Yeah. Okay. No, I mean, as with everything, really, we have to let Christmas pass us by. And then we have to let the horrible month of January as well, when people tend to have uh, issues committing to things. So decisions have to be made. We might take a poll, see what kind of interest there is. There does seem to be a lot of people still saying that they missed out on the first two Kickstarters, and they have to basically go to eBay you know, after the fact, once these ship. I don't like seeing computers go on eBay for 800, 900 pounds. Um, but I respect the choice of someone doing that because they gave us the money and they helped make this thing a reality. Um, but I don't like the fact that people are profiting significantly off it and we're not getting anything. <laughs> you know, we, we, you know, that's kind of a strange, strange thing to say, I guess, but I do, I do kind of feel both sides. Thanks for backing us. But I'm annoyed that you're making money off something that I've never actually gotten money for myself. Um, I sold three of my nexts. I'm just being nice on that. Um, I sold them for face value because I wanted more people to experience it. And I think eventually these nexts do end up in the hands of the people who actually wanted them in the first place. You know, they bounce around from person to person until ultimately someone who actually wants them and gets it out of the box. So. Certainly, I think there's interest in doing a Kickstarter 3 if there's enough interest. And also not to reinvent anything. Um, to keep everything as it is. And the only problem then is people will ask, how can we tell a Kickstarter 2 from a Kickstarter 3? And I'd rather just say, you can't because we're not going to make any changes to it. The case and everything is going to look the same. The question around colours is really down to when is a special edition, not a special edition. And if we were to start making hundreds and hundreds of white ones, what would that do to the few that we've thrown or we're going to throw into the wild? Understanding that it may get us more money, uh, but would they actually be used? Or would they just be prized possessions uh, stored in a glass case? And does that even matter if they are? So, lots of philosophical questions to be answered. I don't know the answer. But <laughs> the straight answer is, is that there is an intention uh, and there is the means to do it. And clearly, there is the demand, so we should do it, I guess. But yes. we, need, we need to restore ourselves for at least a month 
We need to sleep. Chill. Yeah. <laughs> it's easy for you guys to say, but we don't sleep at all. But, <laughs> but we can sleep after the 5,000 people are going to get the machines, post all the questions about what they need to do, and we fix all those first. So yeah. there's a couple of weeks after the delivery yet yeah. before we can rest. I remind you, the first 300 um, uh, just dead boards. What happened to me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a tough job, guys. It's easy when you sit on the outside. But when you have to support all these guys, and yes, we do want the machine to end up in people's places that we use it, the answer uh, Mike's philosophical question, and we want people to have it because we love it because it helps us create stuff. But it's killing us at the same time. It's a very, very, very tough job. And most people that create small FPGA boards and stuff, and You've read probably uh, in the fora around and people's <coughs> comments. Yeah, what did they build? It's it's a committee in a way, and it's not a building by committee as we usually joke around. But it's it has to have a real consensus of what we need to do and how we need to do it, so that most people can benefit from it. It's not just for us; it's for everyone. And so it's a it's a very difficult job to do. So Kickstarter three. As the boss says, because he's the boss, the boss of everything, the boss of boss as well. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> um, it's got, probably going to happen, but you need to cut some slack this time, please. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> That's, don't don't yell at us too much because we're working really really hard, <laughs> really really hard. And it's difficult to get the whole team because you got people like Dee and Robin who were constantly posting answers on the. On Facebook, answering questions from everybody, you know, doing the work on the the pie in the background. There's there's so many people working on this, and people from the community are chipping in as well. There's a lot of people sat in this room who are doing some great things. So, you know, it is. It, it's not just us. It's all of us together in this project. And that I think you know that that's the difference. This is a this is a community of people helping out yeah. as well. So any Kickstarter when people remember the problems you had when you first got the machine. So keep an eye on the forums and the Facebook and yeah. answer some of the beginners' questions if you can. Because and my be God, R M F M. <laughs> oh, read the quick start now. Yeah. My <laughs> can't read the manual. Just read the quick start. Yeah. And the quick start. There's a quick start. Yeah. It's easier. Yeah. Please read the damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> so on on the subject of Kickstarter three, we have kind of started uh, dipping our toes in. We have lead times on components, so we have that expectation. And we also have um, indicative costs. So we have costs for the um, case boards, components, keyboards, etc. So we kind of know where we're aiming for. We could derive from that roughly how much we would need to charge. Um, we just need to kind of decide what point we're going to pull the trigger on it and hope that we get um, perhaps not the same level of commitment as, as Kickstarter 2 because that just blew expectations. Um, but at least if we can get, you know, another 3,000 would take us, well, what are we at the moment? 3 plus, 6 minus, 300. So we, we haven't got to the magical 10,000 <laughs> physical. If you have the no, no, no. compatible. I've not finished. Oh. <laughs> We've not got to the 10,000 physical case next, and I'd really like to push through that and beyond. Because looking at how many, how many Sam Coupes were made, um, many. how many Jupiter races, so I think we beat Jupiter races. Jupiter races were 8,000? Yeah, and I think Sam Coupes, I think we still have to push a bit more, so I'd love to do that. Okay, and we have to beat the Enterprise. <laughs> <laughs> right, folks. Oh, there's one last question. We'll take the last question there. So nice. yeah, thank you so much. Oh, there's uh, another one. Just, just a very, <laughs> very um, quick one. Was... I'm a product manager. Uh -huh. um, I don't know what your roadmap is, what your dream roadmap would be. Obviously, we're all really pleased with what you've done so far. Up here. But what would it be? <laughs> what would it be? I think, if, if you could dream it, what would it be? I think very simplistically, it is actually to finish it. To actually um, freeze the software, to freeze the core, the operating system, and say, this is now feature complete, 
bugs fixed, and the SLC that says this is the next and this is what you now aim for from a hardware and software perspective. And then, it, it, yeah, it, it, it takes on its identity, and at the moment, that identity is still evolving, not so much as it did in the early days when features were being added all over the place. But at the moment, it, it just doesn't feel, when it's not finished and it's still transient, it's, it doesn't feel like a, a, a finished article, and I'd really like it to be a finished article. Uh, do a Kickstarter 3 and get a feel for kind of what, what the uptake is, what, how saturated is this small market. Um, but I don't foresee necessarily anything moving or transitioning into shop sales. Um, I don't believe it's, it's reasonable to expect. I think the learning curve is steeper than any kind of consumer device that you get uh, these days. And it really has to be someone that I feel of a certain age and disposition who would pick this up and bother reading the manual and bother trying to learn how to use it. So if that's if that kind of covers, I guess, roadmap, um, I'd say we're, we're pretty much there in terms of features. Um, we want to bring in the additional cores again to make that you know a lot easier to have additional cores, and we want to produce additional cores as well. Uh, QL, Sam Coupe, Commodore 64? No. <laughs> <laughs> MK14? MK14, yeah. And, and, and we've also got to bear in mind that the most people most people who work on the project are doing it in their spare time, and you can't necessarily expect them to continue forever, especially as they're not getting paid anything for it. So I think you have to be realistic as well. And if people start talking about different form factors of Next or handheld Next and such, if you're expecting then that everybody who worked on the next is going to transition calmly and quietly and continue for an X number of more years working on a, a different footprint of device. And I just don't believe that's the case. I think we're very fortunate to have had the input from the people that we've had, but we just can't take it for granted. Is that negative? No, no, no. And then when we, when we think it's all done, Simon is just running a, a BBC core that tunnel into the 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 the, the, the pie tube that is, is now a coprocessor at his disposal and running at a one gigahertz. So it, it, people make fantastic things with it, and we want to bring that back in. But at some point, we have to say lock, and yeah, and we're getting there. Sorry, and I know that we have a last question. We are way over time. My, my very last question was: we mentioned community mm. a number of times, the importance of community. And you know whether or not the you know round three goes ahead. Hopefully, hopefully it will. Um, even if it doesn't, I wonder what your thoughts are on maintaining the community. Whether it's through, and I know there's the online space. Whether it's through virtual events, whether it's more physical events like this. Just you know, yeah. What are your various thoughts on community? We'll keep showing up. We will we'll keep showing up. We love that thing. Otherwise, I wouldn't be making it. If anything, we'll have more energy to the voting. <laughs> yes, if you, if you don't have to do just breathe, uh, sleep, and uh, eat next all the time, uh, you know, because it's easier to produce it. I mean, yeah. if it's a turnkey, a turnkey solution, per se, it will be so much better for us to engage more with the people. Because right now, we're still building it. As Mike said, if you, it's not feature complete, then you, you have to plan and discuss at the same time. And what if our discussions internally clash with what you're asking and you, as a community, want to, to have from it? We have a roadmap and like every single developer on it, I mean, uh, Gary, Alan, uh, Enrique, uh, Tim, me, uh, Dean, Robin, anybody has a different Ideas which are always coming, they come together and you get uh, in a melting pot kind of thing. And uh, if you bring them together and they're uh, concrete and they're feature complete, then we can actually engage with you. And you say, we need this to be done, and then we can work with you doing it. But you can't do that at the same time. A feature that we're building up on is clashing with what you want. We would love to, to the next to be everything. Theoretically, you can make it anything. 
it's, it's, it's built to be extendable. Uh, but right now we're still developing it. So yeah, the community, will be, I, I believe it will be better uh, developed over the years once it's really feature complete. Let's say, uh, just like the 48K, you say, this is the 48K, that's it. You don't change. Like the games will work on this and that's it. I, I believe if we built it like that, then we'll be better off all of us. I mean, we'll know where to where we stand and what else we can make. That's it. I, 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 I what you mean? We can actually play with it. Yeah. <laughs> no. You're, you're building. <laughs> Sit down. I was going to add as well because at the moment we have a large number of people on the team who attend events, and that could be um, you know Blackpool or or here. But looking or projecting years into the future could be a situation where. It's, it's certainly not, I think we've got nine of the team here today. What I would like to see in future is more of the community um, bringing their next. The way that uh, people bring their 48K Spectrums and 128s and, and other computers, that it's the community who keeps it alive. And some of us may not you know, be continuing on the next in, in the years to come. But I think once you start to see a Sinclair themed event and people treat the next in the same breath as the 48k and start bringing them along, then I think that, that's, a, that's a point I, I really look forward to the day when it's just totally accepted as it's just another Sinclair spectrum. It's been nice to see that floating box on lots of people's stands here today, actually. Just, What's that? Oh, there's an X in there. You see the little square. Well, the, the you thing, see the little bouncing screensaver yeah, box. You think, the, What's the next in that? The thing about this show is, yeah, we had a table, and then you look at the next table, and there's a bunch of necks on it. And then you walk around the corner, and there's a, another next, and it's it's great to see. Yeah. You're almost there. Yeah. Again, yeah. <laughs> Are we done? Done. Well, thank you very much, folks. <laughs> Thank you.